Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the band program here at Suffer Middle School. Uh, I'm Dave Errington. I'm the sixth grade band director, as well as the seventh and eighth grade band director here at the middle school. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I've been teaching here in Suffern for, I believe it's 27 years now, uh, quite a while anyway. <laughs> uh, some of that was in elementary school at Viola and Montebello and Cherry Lane. And then I moved up to the middle school when the sixth grade moved up. I think it was 2002. Uh, I moved up and taught the sixth grade band and helped out with the seventh and eighth grade band along with my colleagues. And then when some of my colleagues retired, I took over the seventh and eighth grade band too. So uh, I've been here for quite a while. Um, I have been also around the block on the other side. You can see I've really got to get a more current picture. My guys are in high school and college now, but I do have a couple of them. So I've been on your side of the fence too. And I am sympathetic about practice time. Don't worry. Uh, sometimes the shoemaker's son or daughter do not have good shoes too. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's see. Uh, I do the band here at the middle school. I also do the jazz band here at the middle school, which I'll be talking about later. Um, I also help out with the musicals and with NISMA and with All County and all that kind of stuff that happens uh, throughout the year in a normal year. Of course, this is looking like it's not going to be a very normal year, but we're hoping it's going to be a positive and productive year in the music department anyway. Um, and I'll be explaining just a little bit about the differences in what I perceive the program to be this year in a little bit. Um, just a couple of logistical things first, though. If you've never been to the band program before in the middle school, uh, the schedule works this way. The kids have me every other day. So, um, for instance, if they have band during 2AC, that would be second period on A and C days, they would see me second period only on the A and C days. On the B and D days, they would have their foreign language, Spanish or whatever they're taking this year, French, Spanish, French, Italian, I think it is now. Um, but anyway, they would see me every other day. So, for instance, if they saw me last Thursday, the first day of school, they're going to see me this this Monday and this Wednesday and this Friday. Usually, you know, three days a week or two days a week, depending on how it is. Um, like I said, it does alternate with the uh, world language class. The way it is going to work this year is going to be just a little bit different, I think. Now, in music, we kind of deal with two things a lot. And sometimes the kids get these confused and, and you know, regular adults get these confused sometimes too if you're not a musician. So let me just talk about, um, we have practice that kids do, of course, and we also have rehearsal. And sometimes people get those two terms confused. Let me just explain a little bit. Practice is something that you do on your own, sitting in your own little room, running through scales, playing songs, doing new skills, doing all that kind of stuff, working on building your own skills as a musician, okay? Um, rehearsal, is kind of a collective practice. It's something that we all do together. In other words, after you know your individual part in the band music or the orchestra music or the chorus music, then you all get together as a group and you put it all together and make it sound really good. Now, in the COVID world, of course, we can still address the whole practice thing. That's very, very easy, in fact. In fact, there is kind of a silver lining in the COVID world. Um, when I run classes this year, I think what I'm gonna be doing is, you know, at the beginning of class, we'll talk about a concept, we'll work on something that we have to learn that day. And then probably during some point of the lesson, I will say, okay, guys, practice time now. And I will have them turn off their cameras um, and just spend about, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, I'll designate, um, practicing whatever we just did. There'll be a certain time that they're going to come back, and then they will come back and we'll all get back together and we'll check on things. I'll call on a couple people to play it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but it, it's going to work a little better, actually, when the kids are at home because I can't really do that in band. When you've got 40 kids in a room, Practicing all together is a little bit chaotic. You can't really do your own thing. But if you're sitting at home in your own bedroom or your living room, you really can do that. So we're going to kind of try to take advantage of that. Um, what I'm going to be doing at the beginning of the year, at least here while we're still virtual, is pretty much exclusively what I would call practice, meaning working on individual skills. Later on, after we can get all back together, of course, at school or wherever, then we'll start to work on ensembles and that kind of thing. Uh, the ensemble uh, skills, that would be called rehearsal, really. Okay, and that's putting the whole picture together later course. Um, practice time, I want to emphasize, is not free time. Okay, I'm not saying to the kids, okay, turn off your camera and go play the Xbox. <laughs> turn off the camera and play your, with your puppy. No, that's not the way it is. In the middle of class, they should be always either focused on me on the screen, or if I'm not on the screen, they, they will be playing their instrument in a productive kind of way. And I give them practice tips all year long about that. Um, there's going to be a link to another uh, video at the end of this video called how, sh how often should my child be practicing? Which I get a lot of questions on from parents. I'm not going to really talk about practice in this video because this is a Meet to Teacher video and I just wanted to introduce myself and kind of introduce the program. But if you are interested more in my philosophy of how kids should practice and how often they should practice, go ahead and, and click on that link at the end and you'll see what I mean. Um, let's see. So grading in the middle school. We do have a grade in band in the sixth grade. Uh, it's comprised of 50% 
class participation, meaning how, uh, how well the kids are attending basically to what we're doing in class, whether they're participating in what's going on, answering questions, doing the practice when I ask them to do it, all that kind of thing. Um, it's 25% playing quizzes. We do have playing quizzes where I'll say to the kids, okay guys, next time number 42 in the book, uh, you know, two weeks from now, you're going to have a playing quiz on that. Here we go. This is how you do it. I show them all how to do it. They have a chance to practice it. They can do it. Um, this year, we'll just be doing them online, it looks like. Um, they'll be playing little video. They'll be making little videos to send to me. I will get it. I'll watch it. I'll grade it. I'll say, okay, you did this well. You did this well. You did this well. You could work on this to get better. Um, there will be also at the end of this video a link to my grading rubric that I use. Uh, the grades in the sixth grade band are always out of 20 points. I don't go to 100 points. I go to 20 points. So if your kid comes home and says, I got a 20 on a band test, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. <laughs> okay, and you'll see where the 20 points comes from in the rubric. I do explain that. I think I have a video on that too. Maybe I'll link that as well. So 50% class participation, 25% playing tests, and we have 25% also of the after school band attendance. Now, let me talk about after school band. In a normal year, uh, we'd be starting up after school band about the fourth week of school. I'm going to kind of put it on a hold for right now just so I can see what the world brings us toward that last week of school. If that's the, I mean, the last week of September. If that's going to be, if we're going to be back in school then, then the after school band is going to be as usual in person. Um, the way after school band works is once per week, every sixth grader comes in either on Tuesday or Thursday, and they and you as parents get to choose. They can come either on Tuesday or on Thursday every week. I would appreciate it if you would let me know what day I can expect them, but it's not a hard and fast kind of rule. If uh, Johnny signs up for Tuesday and then one week they can't come on Tuesday because they have a dentist appointment, then Johnny says to me, can I come on Thursday this week? I'm going to say, yeah, sure, no problem. Don't worry about it. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Um, I would like you to choose Tuesday or Thursday at the very beginning, just to make it logistically a little bit easier on me. Um, the grade part of after school band is very, very easy. It's just if they show up or not. Okay, that's a really easy thing to do. So they get 25% of their entire grade from just showing up to after school band. It's not a big deal. Um, we're, we're probably going to have the after school band. It, it's going to kind of depend on what the world brings us toward the end of September. We may start the after school band in a virtual kind of fashion. After school band, by the way, it goes from 245 until 345 every day. Um, and if we're in school, there is a bus that brings the kids home or a round of buses that brings the kids home or you're free to come and pick them up yourself, of course. There'll be more details on that that'll, at a letter that goes out later, okay? Um, let's see, we also have a lot of extras that happen in the, in the middle school music program in general. Of course, we have the jazz band, we have all county bands that happened uh, every year, including we did get in last year, the all county bands before the world, uh, before we were so rudely interrupted. Um, so we have all county, we did not get to NISMA last year, but we're hoping to get to that this year, of course. Uh, there are also two musicals at the middle school. There's a 7th and 8th grade musical and a 6th grade musical, um, which, of course, your 6th graders are welcome to participate in. Um, that usually happens in the spring, so we're not really looking forward to that right now. But we will be later on. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'm pretty good at answering the email. It's dyarrington at suffrancentral.org. Um, I'll have a link to that at the end in my, in my description. Also, there will be a, a link to the video, like I said, how often should my child be practicing? That's a really good question that a lot of parents ask me as they come into the middle school. Um, the, the short answer is they should be practicing a little bit most days of the week. What I shoot for is 20 minutes a day, six days a week for a total of 120 minutes per week. Um, and it is important that they do a lot of days of the week. Um, the number of days you do is more important than the number of minutes you do. So if you do 120 minutes all in one day, that's not nearly as good as doing 20 minutes a day, six times a week. Um, that's just the way our brains and our muscles learn. Um, and I explain more of that in the video. So if you'd like to click on that, you're more than welcome to, of course. Also my grading rubric, I'll put in a uh, link to that as well. Any other questions you have, of course, if they're not addressed by my website, you can try that. But of course, you know, drop me an email. I'm pretty good at getting back to people uh, very quickly, usually within 24 hours. Um, so if you do have any other questions, please feel free to drop me a line. Like I said, dyarrington at sufferincentral.org. Okay. Welcome to the middle school. Thanks.